Hello, everybody. Uh, and as you can see, it's a handwriting day today. But I got stuff to, I got some show and tell, which I am very excited about. Oh my god. Okay, daylight savings, dude. We do not like daylight savings. <laughs> At least I do not like daylight savings. Because I had to start the stream. This is the third time I've had to start the stream because I did the title wrong. My goodness. Ugh. And I have a f plugged in my phone. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I think it's probably a good idea if, for me to do handwriting today because apparently other things are going to be a real pain in the batoot. But look! Looky, looky, looky. Looky what I got today. Hee. So, we have an, uh, another Star Trek deck to choose from. Hello, Corvin. Yeah, my head's mushy. I took a nap today, and I took a nap longer than I wanted to. And, jeez. Oh, and so, okay. And so, yeah, my head's all over the place. So, um, yeah, it comes a little guidebook, and, you know, does all the things. And, um, what's kind of interesting about this deck is that all the people, like, all the main characters are in, uh, in the Major Arcana, which is kind of fascinating. And I gotta figure out, alright, so, like, all the major people, like, okay, Data's the fool. I love that. Hello, Clockwalket. I did successfully earn my transcripts yesterday. Yippee! Excellent. Hello, Clockwalk. I didn't see you sneak in there. Hiya. So, like, this is called Data's the Fool. And then, you know, this makes total sense with the Forge is the Magician. I mean, that works, right? And then we've got... I mean, yeah, who else, right? Like, yeah. Although this is an interesting one, but I think I think I think I like it. The Empress with with uh her. This one I'm not so sure, but he could have been the devil too. But I do like who they have for the devil too, but yeah, this works. This is an interesting one for for the Hierophant. And um But it does make sense because she got obsessed and yeah, you know, over rules and stuff. And this is cute. I always love their wedding. Very, very cute. And of course, the chariot. Yeah. And this kind of speaks for itself. Strength. And you've got Data's daddy for the helmet. And I, I could have put her as a high priestess too. But Wheel of Fortune, yeah, that works. That works. So, and then my favorite, my honey, for justice. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, I wasn't sure about this for a second, but then I'm like, of course, the hangman is Lieutenant Barkley. I mean, and this made me all teary because I was just like, oh, come on. That made, that made me all teary. I'm like, mm, yeah, okay. So I... And then we got Spock for Temperance. And and then we've got Lore for the Devil. I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. This is interesting. The Borg guy for the for Hugh for the Tower. And I'm like, oh yeah, that's Hugh. Right. Yeah. And then for the star we've got Wesley. My buddy there. We like Wesley on this channel. Just so you know. Just saying. <laughs> but this was a cool choice. For the moon. I think that's a really interesting choice for the moon. Hey kids, how are you? Yep, no problem. And then, okay. This is probably my favorite sons in a while. But, Loxana for the sun. Oh, come. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. Yup. Yup. We'll take that. And then, <laughs> uh, of course, Q for judgment. 
And, uh, yeah. And then we've got the world. So, and then, um, the suits are interesting. So there's a king, queen, knight, and a page. And then it's basically kind of a pip style. Yeah, and so, you know, that's the ace. It's an ace of starships, which I'm assuming is cups because um, cause you've got, you know, Spock's dad, um, the, the other doctor there, and then, like, Picard's love interest, and Lol. Oh, I love Lol. She's such a great character. So that's that. And I think that is resident of cups and then the rest of them are just like different numbers of starships so there's not as much imagery for the thing and then you have um the suit of cloaks so you've got um you know this dude uh that's pro council dude if i remember right and then of course you've got um shoot i can never remember her the romulan name but her and then for the Knight of Cloaks, you got her. She's always a great character. I just never remember the names for them. And then I've got... I don't remember what she was. And then, like, the rest of it is just different numbers of... Um, oh, I'm putting that is all... I don't know. I'm doing this one. This one, okay. Okay. And then they're just different numbers of Romulan ships. But what's really kind of funny for coins is they have the Ferengi. So you've got King of Latinum. Oh, and of course, of course, Queen of Latinum. Right, right. Uh, Knight of Latinum. I think that, yeah, that's, is that Rom? I think that's Rom. No. Oh, no, no, that's one of Quark's cousins. Or is that... What's his face? Um, shoot. No, I can't remember. King of Latinum. Knight of Latinum. Page of Latinum. Hmm. I don't remember who they are. I'll have to look it up in the book. And then, um, and then the rest of that suit is gold press Latinum. And then you've got, of course, the suit of Batleths. <laughs> right. Oh, King of Batlefs, right? Yeah, that's that's fair. Oh, Lursa, Queen of Queen of Batlefs, or is that is that Lursa? Yeah, that's Lursa. They're from Lursa and Bator. Well, it's one of the two twins, anyway. Oh, and Knight of Batlefs is um, Worf's first wife. There, she's so I love her story. Oh, and the page. The page of Batleth. E Alexander. So cute. Oh, that works. And then, of course, it's just as different configurations of Batleth. So, we have a new deck to play with. Um, and, of course, you know, I haven't really read... I haven't read with this yet, and, like, this is my first time shuffling it. And so, if you do want a tarot reading with it, just realize it's going to take me a little bit longer for the tarot reading. <laughs> with this one but I now have a TNG deck to go with the TOS deck so now when you when you want to use the Star Trek deck you have to specify which one so all right who was messaging me I get messages okay. so yeah today's a handwriting day I have some letters that I need to write and you know and I've got some journaling to do and some poems to write and, and hopefully some tarot readings to do <laughs> and uh I might take a look at the tarot book guidebook for a minute just to kind of orient myself to these the, to this particular thing I'm not really fond of um pip suits like um where there's no imagery on the numbered cards. But um, I can work with that. It's just not my favorite type of deck to work with. 
but the over but since I know the overall imagery of TNG, like it's not gonna be quite as a pain in the butt as if it was like you know um, like a somebody random art deck, you know. But yeah, they they did a pretty good job on on the uh, on matching uh, cards with people. That's pretty very cool. So so yeah, you know if you so now if you got to specify a TNG or TOS for the deck if you want a Star Trek deck. So that was my show and tell today, and I'm very excited, <laughs> as you can tell. So, um, yeah, and sorry I was late today, it's just been that kind of a day. Yeah, sure. The art's actually pretty neat on it. I really, I'm just trying to remember who the, the Ferengi characters were. I mean, I know Vosh, but yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look at that during the during the uh, Pomodoro today. So, and this has a smaller box, which is nice, than the Christmas deck. So, I really, like it really has a nice box too. That's a really pretty box. It looks kind of like um, one of the book covers actually. So, yeah, sure, if you want a reading later, I am all down for that. And um, yeah, let me put this over here for now. So, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what's going to happen today. I'm uh, probably going to do some journaling, some po poetry writing, some uh, letter writing, because I have a couple letters that need to be answered, because they've been sitting around for about a week or two. Uh, actually, a lot longer than, that <laughs> than for one of them, so I really should kind of get on with it. Um, I kind of clean my desk a little, too, I think. It's getting kind of messy. <laughs> So, uh, right now I'm too focused on figuring out what I'm going to work on. I've decided to return to a story I was working on a few years ago and abandoned due to a bipolar crash. Yeah, if, like, you know, kind of go where you're feeling it and see, see if it's, yeah, we'll see where it goes. Like, you may start looking at it today and be like, hmm, maybe it shouldn't go this way. <laughs> you never know. I need like a little container <laughs> on my desk, I think. <sighs> so I... Anyway. Yeah, so figure out... Oh, yeah, you know, I haven't done my spiel yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Gina, aka Worthy Advisor, and welcome to my stream. If you are new here, if you haven't been here before, um, or if you just don't know who I am, which most of you do know who I am, so, you know. Anyway, I'm Gina, a.k.a. Worthy Advisor. That's my website up there. You can go check out my books. Oh, very cool, Clock Rocket. I like that idea. Sci-fi retelling of Psyche and Eros. Nice. Um, yes. Where was I? Oh, yes. Um, that is my website up there, RevGinaPond.net, and you can go check out my books. I have four of them out. And it's called the Survey Intergalactic Series, and they're big, chunky space operas. I have three more books in the pipeline that are in the editing process that uh, I kind of just finished book seven like really completed book seven uh, last week so I'm kind of like at a point where I'm like hmm, what do I write next and so I'm just kind of letting myself kind of go so we're so this week is going to be like all over the place as far as what I'm doing um, I have some editing work that I have for uh, my wife and a friend of mine um, so there's some work on that, and um, yeah. But this is all. This this stream is also here for you all, and to help you get stuff done, whether you do the pomodoros or not, um, just to have someone hang out with you while you do stuff. So um, we do pomodoro sprints, 20 minutes on, with a five minute break in between. And during the five minute break, um, we do tarot readings. As as you see, I have a new tarot deck. We do tarot readings, we chat, and people ask questions of each other and me. Um, and you can ask questions about writing, you can ask questions about spirituality, because I am a Wiccan Christian priest. 
Um, uh, you can ask me, I don't know, about tarot, <laughs> whatever, uh, ADHD stuff, body doubling, what we do on here. Um, I do turn my mic off during sprints, but that lets us listen to my wife's awesome music, which I will just put the link in the chat right now. Hang on. Music. There we go. Okay. Um, my, go, go take a look at my wife's uh, SoundCloud there. Um, she has a bunch of stuff that's not on my playlist. I need to kind of stop my playlist and put it somewhere else. There. Let's see. Let's put it. There we go. We'll start there. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so there's a bunch of stuff there that's not on this list because uh, I have a certain vibe for the list and uh, all that. Although I do try to put new stuff in. Although for some reason with VLC, I, I don't know, I guess I have to make a new playlist every time I want to add stuff to it. I don't know. Anyway, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> um, Oh, excuse me. Mm. I do have closed captions for this stream, and um, they aren't 100% accurate, but they do get the job done. And sometimes they're kind of hilarious. And um, as mentioned before, you can get tarot readings during the break. That's um, You can redeem them with channel points below the chat and the fine little fountain pen. And, fine, and um, I do do podcast readings at 8 p.m. on Fridays, where I read chapters of my book to you in lieu of audiobooks because that's how I'm kind of rolling with them right now and we're working on book three colony right now um so there's that it's the the podcast is called tales from flat space and it's available on any podcast platform oh good lord <laughs> it's available on any podcast platform um and you can also find um audio players on my website RedGinaPond.net And lastly, if you just want to lurk, if you just need somebody to hang out with you while you're getting stuff done, while you're hanging out and doing whatever, you just kind of need a chill, some chill noise in the background or whatever, um, lurking is absolutely fine. Lurkers are love and I love my lurkers. Um, I just ask if you're a long time lurker, if you, if, if, you know, if you've been lurking for a few weeks and stuff, just to uh, pop in and say hi over some months in a great while and, uh, let us know how you're doing. So. That is it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> See, I took a nap. Okay, so daylight savings time has totally messed me up this week. Plus, I've got other bodily issues dealing I'm dealing with at the moment. Um, yay. Uh, yay, hormones. <laughs> Um, so that's why I was out yesterday because I had a headache and all that jazz. And I'm feeling much better today, thankfully. But like, daylight savings time like is totally messed me up. And um, I think I think uh, Corvin had mentioned something about that earlier. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> me and daylight savings don't mix. And I'm 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 looking forward to the day when we finally get rid of it because it's just like. It's not useful anymore. It's not really doing anything except causing problems, in my opinion. I know other people like it, and I, I know some people I know actually like it, but I'm just like, just for that week especially, once you want that first week, it's just, and like, I didn't mean to take a nap as long as I did today, and <sighs> Lord, it's been a thing. Anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? I'm going to uh, turn off my mic and turn on uh, the timer and turn up the music and um, we'll get started. And um, yeah, let's do it.
Yeah. Scared by my own timer. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It is break time. Hello, Michael Bolden. Good to see you. It's been a while. How you doing? And uh, sounds like you're finally getting to a point to getting on, getting on. I'm on hold with my medical provider. Fun times. Oh, joy. Hey, healthcare. <sighs> So I, yeah, I have, I've been having some healthcare gur arg because uh, Sarah had some stuff show up on her blood test. Not like super scary, but like stuff like the Swiss doctors never told her about. <laughs> it's like, um, what? <laughs> Trying to make an appointment to get my meningitis vaccine and get an MMR titus. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah, right? Like, <sighs> but our, our Swiss doctors were kind of weird. So, and at least their initial doctor, she just kind of dismissed a lot of things. So, I don't know if that was because she didn't like the practice where she was working at or what, but <sighs> not really thrilled. But, eh, the, the Irish doctor's really good, so. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> None of my child's records are available digitally, so getting my tighter tight is the best way to get NYU a digital. Yeah, yeah, that is that is the best way if you don't know. Um, like I'm, I know for I know for sure that I've gotten all my vaccines and everything because my mom is very much like you must have your vaccines, but um, uh, um, but yeah, getting titers done is usually the best way to make sure that your vaccines have been done um, and um, depending on where your titer is at you may get boosters um, but you know hey boosters don't hurt <laughs> and actually help so so yep that is the best way to do it ugh <sighs> I like this dress, but sometimes it just like rides up and it's driving me crazy. <laughs> primary my MR season, a booster at age five and fifteen, so should be good. Yep, yep. If I'm not, I can get the booster. Yep, absolutely. I say anything you, you're deficient on, you always get a booster for. Although I, <laughs> I feel bad like I haven't really gotten a tetanus one, but everybody forgets the tetanus one because <laughs> that one is just like hard to remember sometimes. At least I forget the tetanus one, but. Um, But um, I am up to up to date on my flu and COVID, so and that I will always do because yep because I would rather not die. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> and just so people know, getting a vaccine doesn't mean you don't get sick from something. It just means you won't die <laughs> or have to go to the hospital for something. Gosh, I mean, I, I I remember posting that like in late 2020 on Tumblr, and I posted it, and people are like, "Uh, yeah, you shouldn't get sick if you get a vaccine." It's like, no, vaccines help you get rid of a vac a virus faster because it has primed your immune system. It doesn't necessarily mean you won't get the virus, you know. <laughs> um. For some vaccines, it is true that it will stop the virus in its tracks, but it just <laughs> doesn't necessarily mean you won't get the virus in your blood. Uh, I don't know what it costs to check titers, but definitely want to get a booster based on my age. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the stuff you want to you, you want to d double check. Um, Yeah, for depending on age too, you you know you you definitely want to get your shingles. You definitely want to get flu and COVID, um, and the pneumonia one. If you're in an area where pneumonia is pretty rampant, so it you know it just depends on your area and what's going on in your area and like, you know, that kind of thing. <coughs> but it's always worth checking if you're if you if you feel you need to check it. All right. 
Um, let's get back to work, shall we? And I need to go say goodnight to my parents. And um, I will be right back.
Wow, it's break time already. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Got into, uh, really got into my letter. Um, what's really funny is that this particular pen pal was, was asking me some questions about something I actually did a TikTok on the other day. Um, talking about American entitlement and when they go overseas. And, um, and, you know, you know, not all Americans, obviously. Like, I try not to be a total bastard when I'm... <laughs> when I'm elsewhere but um you know there's a lot of entitlement to American immigrants who move elsewhere you know they expect that they won't have to learn the language they expect that they'll have find stuff that they want in the grocery store that's you know from America and like they they want American food and you know yeah da, da, da. And, I'm not, and it's like no that's not <laughs> that's not how it works <laughs> You're coming into somebody else's country. You need to learn language. You need to learn how to be polite. You need to learn how to be respectful because it's not always the same for every country. Like, you know, one of the big examples is like, if, say, if you went to Japan, you know, you'd have to learn, you know, like how to say good morning, how to say hello, and how to be polite, and like the hierarchy of age, which is a thing. Um, in Switzerland, I had to learn a lot of that kind of thing. Like, you know, there are certain things you would say to an older person that you wouldn't say to a younger person, and, like, like diminutives, and, like, the actual wording to be polite, like, the wording for I, w I want, ich möchte, in Switzerland is different than ich hatte, which is what it is in German, in Germany. So, you know, you, you gotta learn, it, the, but, but it's like, there's a lot of people who don't bother to learn how to get along in polite society <laughs> and it's and and then people wonder why americans get a reputation it's like it's because you don't think about what you're doing and where you're going you know you, at the very least learn how to say yes no please and thank you <laughs> like, and i'm sorry i don't know x language right like get some of those phrases down you know even if you're just visiting Yes, no, please, thank you, and I'm sorry, I don't understand. Um, or, you know, if you, or it's like, oh, my, my German isn't that great. You know, mein Deutsch is nicht sehr gut. <laughs> that's, that's, that, I, I use that a lot. I used to say, my Deutsch is nicht sehr gut. Um, ist, ist English okay? Is English okay? And, you know, some people s ask Jane, like, they should just be able to speak English and not have a problem. It's like, no. You're in... It's basically like, you're in somebody else's house, aka country, so you need to know how to be polite. <laughs> and it's... Pol and it's... It's also kind of a matter of consent. Like, they don't have to consent to speaking English at your demand. Right? <laughs> like... So it is polite to ask, hey, my, my German is crap. Can we please speak English? Because I, it, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I can carry on the conversation, right? And even if somebody said, well, my English isn't that great, I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get through. <laughs> well, you know, that's what we've got Google. And I was like, we are having Google. <laughs> like, and then they just laugh and so um you know and we'd we'd, we'd work we'd make we'd get through but the thing is is like because i did that and i learned how to use the right phrasing for politeness i got along much better like especially once i learned the right the proper fa phrases in swiss german for politeness sake like like that um ich muss versus ich hatte, which is you know Swiss, Swiss, Swiss versus German, Swiss German versus German German. So, you know, <laughs> it just frustrates me. It's just like you know these people are complaining online, like oh people think we're a joke and we have this rep, and I'm like, yeah, that was earned. <laughs> like, it's not going away anytime soon because there's a lot of entitled people from the United States that go overseas and expect to be catered to. It's not how the world works. And I've also learned a lot, you know, being an immigrant myself. Like, I don't... Oops. 
let me pause the timer like I understand what it means to be an immigrant in another country where you don't know the language and you're just trying to make it and you're just trying to get along you know and having people look at you funny just because you don't know the language and you're from a country that either they don't particularly care for or you know they're just seeing you as oh you're just another immigrant you know so it's not easy and the the process of immigration is really difficult i don't think i think there's a lot of people especially in the u.s that don't understand just how difficult immigration in general is yeah but the like immigration in general especially like going to switzerland was actually the easiest one i've done so far um there's more stuff in in country for switzerland that's harder so like there's definitely you need to learn german you need to integrate um which was one of the one of the reasons we actually left and decided to go to ireland um because it was really difficult for us but we also like <laughs> but we also got hit in, w with covid in the middle of trying to integrate too so uh, some people in the u.s extremely seem to think moving anywhere else or even into the u.s is as easy as packing bags yeah and it's not um you know for those of you who have been with me this past year like almost nearly a year now you know we've had to get a, a mountain of paperwork together um i've had to get pictures taken we've had to get things um stamped you know that they're legit documents and we're just now at the point where we're about to submit my visa paperwork yay but like i can't go be with my wife <laughs> in ireland because they'll deport me because i'm p applying for a visa right like so um and like like when my wife was here she um was on a work visa and she applied for a green card and um that application like she had to go to doctor's appointments she had to go get biometrics done she had to get refer letters of reference because she was on a it's what's called a um, what she's looking for is a uh, national interest waiver because of her um skills um and her education and and, and the knowledge and, and the particular knowledge that she had because she was working for nasa at the time and all that so like she had to get references she had to put submit um scientific papers she had to submit like reams and reams and reams of paperwork and in the end we had to do some like serious like legal gymnastics to get her green card when she was here um because uh you know in the end in the end it's you know because she's trans too so in the end like it was just up to the whim of some person in a sitting in an office in virginia right so and not to mention the cost i mean it's thousands of dollars like if your company is not paying for your immigration costs you are paying like thousands of dollars out of pocket at least three thousand minimum in the u.s um there is a fee for application um, that I'm, I will have to pay and add, like, I, I have to add a couple of money orders to my application to pay the fees for the application. <laughs> like, you know, it is not cheap it, and you just can't really show up. Um, and, 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 and as far as the immigration on the border thing is concerned, um, for refugees, they actually have to show up. <laughs> That's the problem. Like, the reason why we, there's so many people coming here to ask for asylum is that they changed the law so that you have to be in the country to ask for asylum. You can't just apply for it at, from outside of the U.S. Um, so, you know what really makes me mad about some of the folks that are like oh the border thing the border thing i was like no we created our own monster <laughs> we've created our own problem this is not other countries shoving people in our into the country it's other countries that are creating refugees that are coming here to look for asylum 
And they are following the rules. You know? Exactly, kids. They are following the rules. They are doing exactly what we asked them to do. Is to come here and ask for asylum. <laughs> and, yeah. So, you know, I have a greater understanding how hard that is. I mean... It's, it, 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 it is really frustrating. Like, you're just trying to get along. You're trying to get groceries. And you can't remember the words for eggs and butter and milk. Because you're so frustrated and you're tired. And, you know, you've been in classes, like language classes. You've been in uh, uh, citizenship classes and English classes. Or, you know, German classes, you know, for me. You know, it's, it's hard. It is not an easy process. And I really wish more people understood that. I mean, for Ireland, it's a little easier. I don't have a lot of the language barrier thing going on. But it's still a process. You know, you still just... <laughs> you know. And, you know, and I have a niece that's, you know, trying to stay in the UK. And, she, and it's a process for her, too. And it's not easy. When you grow up bilingual, you can also end up with the... I can't remember the word, the right language problem at the worst times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're trying to get health care. Like, the hardest part, actually, being an immigrant in a country where you don't 100% speak the language, is getting health care. Because there's a language barrier there. And especially with more complicated things like medicine, you know, you can't explain fully what's going on. And so, like, you know, I go to the doctor and I try to explain things and, like, totally, like, totally over her head. And it's hard. It's really, really hard. So, okay, that's my soapbox for the day. <laughs> and, you know... You know, it, 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 it's a big double standard to expect to be catered to, like, for Americans to, for a lot of Americans to expect to be catered to in somebody else's country when they wouldn't do the same thing for somebody in our country. Like, it just drives me up the wall. It's like, because you, you know, when you, when immigrants come over, you expect them that they have to learn English. And a lot of Im immigrants do learn English because it is, a, it's becoming more of the lingua lingua franca or whatever it is like the the uh, trade language but you know it, it's it's not it's like it's 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 very rich of us to demand that people speak english and then expect another country to speak english to you even though their country that is not their official language like Oh, it drives me up the wall. And don't, don't even get me started about the people that, like, like won't buy certain things in the new country. Like, there are people that will take, like, will get these big, huge uh, suitcases, come back to the U.S. for a couple of weeks, go to Costco, load up their suitcases with stuff, like snacks and cleaning products and stuff because they can't find it. In, in the country that they're in, it's like, dude, you just go to a grocery store and there's cleaning products everywhere. What the hell? You know? It, oh, yeah. That just... Oh. <sighs> Sigh. Okay. In with Jesus, out with Satan. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get back to it. We're gonna get back to doing some work here.
It's break time, and boy, we're getting to the last Pomodoro. <sighs> I guess I was writing more of this letter than I thought. <laughs> anyway, how y'all doing? Hope you're doing great. Whatever work you've been working on, it's been working and doing the things. And I did see you, Corbett. I don't know. You're probably gone by now. So, but have a good appointment. Talk to you later. <sighs> Oh, excuse me. I don't know, are we gonna do ESO tonight? 
I don't know if I should do ESO tonight. Maybe we'll do ESO tonight. I don't know. I have pastry to eat, though. See, okay. <laughs> my parents, um, my parents' day got shifted weird because they had to go later for an appointment than they wanted to, but, um, they ended up getting Cuban sandwiches for dinner, and, oh, so good. And the Cuban place makes these pastries that are just, it's kind of like, um, these danishes, kind of, but they have guava paste and cream, and, oh, like a, like a pastry cream kind of thing. And oh my god, they are so good. And mine has been sitting next to me this whole time because they're kind of messy to eat. So <laughs> I kind of didn't want to make a mess on stream. So <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Those things are the bomb. Oh. And I'm and I don't care what anybody says. As much as I'm not like happy to be in Florida, the Cuban sandwich is the king of sandwiches, and it's the best sandwich ever, and I cannot be dissuaded from that, because dang, that is so good. What's really kind of cool is um, I bought this book, Pastelitos Aristo, yeah, oh, sorry, clock walking, yeah, but oh man, yeah. I haven't, I haven't had the uh, the other stuff, but Cuban sandwiches, man. There's a, this this particular place makes them so well, and I don't know what the person that was making the sandwiches did today, but they were just like mm, extra awesome. They had extra pickle, extra mustard, and like the fatty bits of the pork, and oh, and like the sandwich had soaked up all that goodness, that meaty goodness. I mean, if you've never had a Cuban sandwich, I'm so sorry. Like, <laughs> it is the best sandwich ever. Oh, Lord. So. <sighs> yes. Mm. And I had some Cuban flan, too. Oh. That was so good. And I love flan, too. Like, I've had flan from, like, I've had Spanish flan, I've had Mexican flan, and now I've had Cuban, and oh. Oh, I'm so sorry, Clockwise. Like, if you can ever have one, you should. They're so good. Oh. It's actually would be a reason to go to Florida for a little bit. Just to get one and maybe go back home. But still. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend people coming to Florida just for the sandwich. But, you know. If you could, it would be worth it. Um, so yeah, oh, and there's like a sandwich sitting in there, and they're like, well, you can, if we don't eat it, you can have half of that, I'm like, hmm. and then I have pastry, so I'm, I'm good, and if I get hungry later, there's peanut butter toast, <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but yeah, Cubans are just so good, mm. yum, yum. Oh, and I was just saying, like, I have a recipe book that I got um, that my mom's been cooking out of, and it actually does have a recipe for Cuban pork for Cuban sandwiches. And I'm like, heck, yeah, we're making that. Because, you know, my wife can't come here, so I'm going to have to learn how to make it in Ireland because, like, you know, otherwise we won't be able to have it. <laughs> So, heck yeah. Well, that's not going to be hard in uh, in uh, Ireland. We're in rural Ireland, so lots of farms and stuff. So we'd be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm good at making stuff from scratch, so I think... Oh, let me pause that. But So I think I'll be able to get it, you know... At least the first time I'll get it close. And then I'll... I'll once I do it the first time... I'll know how to tweak it until I get it right. Because I've done that with like burritos and all that stuff too. So, Naranja Hagia is not always readily available. Yeah. I will figure it out. 
I will I will do it because like I mean I've had to do that for other things um bitter orange um yeah I'll figure it out there's actually a lot of thing uh, a lot of things that I can get in Europe that may like may seem hard to get but there aren't they really aren't um and what's really interesting is that um there's a lot of um websites for different um yeah there's Spain right there and there's a lot of websites like there was a German website that was all Mexican food it was all like Mexican staples so you know it it, it probably won't be that difficult actually yeah, Spain, Spain is good for that kind of stuff. Um, whether I can import it to Ireland is the other thing, but uh, being in the EU, it's probably not going to be as hard to do that as um, getting it from the U.S. to Ireland. Ask me how I know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, I'll probably be able to find a good deal of stuff. Actually, probably what it is is just a Google search for Cuban, uh, Cuban groceries. And uh, once I'm in Ireland, I should say, and um, that that's usually how I find things. Um, that's how I found the Mexican one. I was like, um, you know, you put in Mexican groceries in Google, and that's how I found it. And they had everything, like from pinto beans to salsas to like um, the bags of chili pepper, <laughs> the bags of dried chilies. I have so many dried chilies. I don't even. I don't know if they survived the move. But I had like big bags of dried dried jalapenos <laughs> and dried chipotle peppers. <laughs> and never mind the jars of like mole so mole base and <laughs> because you know I had to learn how to cook a lot of the Mexican food that we really loved from California because you just can't. There's just not like there was a couple. There's like one Mexican restaurant in Zurich. And people told me it was okay, but like, for the most part, you learn you, you end up learning how to make a lot of your favorite foods because you just can't get them. So I mean, it's gonna be the same thing when I go to Ireland. There's gonna be a lot of foods that I just gonna learn how to make. So, so like I was saying, like, I'm going to learn how to make Cubans <laughs> in Ireland. And usually how it goes is I make the first one, and it's not quite right, and then I just kind of like think about it in my head to make it better and then I keep making it until it gets to a point where each time I make it it's good I know right <laughs> I know I know and my wife will be very happy because <laughs> she likes pork too <laughs> so like we both like um, grilled pork and, and marinated pork and ham and all those happy making things so Yes, we will make lots of friends. I'm planning to introduce... Oh, no, I can't introduce that one to the neighbors. At least not those neighbors. They're Muslim. So, unless I got... Ooh, unless they could find me halal pork. Ooh. Although they don't usually eat pork, pork don't, don't they? Or is it just halal? The halal thing. I forget. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing. But I'll make other things. That's right. Pork is not halal. But I can make my burritos. Because I know I make sous vide burrito. Like sous vide um, shredded beef. Carne, like carne asada kind of thing. So. I could do the burritos. We'll do burritos. I think they'll help. They'll, they'll like burritos. Yes. I make a very good one. I put it in my sous vide for 24 hours. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Vaca frita? Frita de pollo. I don't remember what that one is. Vaca frita. Yeah, I do my, I, I do my, I do, um, pulled beef and I put it in sous vide for 24 hours. It's so good. <sighs> Heck yeah. Oops. Oh, oh, okay. Jackpot. All right, that's getting bookmarked. Hell yeah. Uh, where does that go? 
Oh yeah, jackpot. Yeah. Thank you. Ah, there we go. Leftover. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey. Oh, hey, I do this anyway. We call it a fry up. But we, I mean, it's different spices and stuff, but, um, in. Heck yeah. Um, what's really interesting is that, um, in the UK, this is, uh, this is also called a fry up. So you use, like, Sunday dinner, um, stuff from the Sunday before, which is usually pot roast and stuff like that. Yeah. And you basically fry it, you, you have it for breakfast in the morning and you fry it up with eggs and, and, um, mushrooms and, like, other things. Like, it's kind of like an addition to English breakfast. So it's kind of the same idea. Heck yeah. Yum. Wine. I don't always cook with wine, but we may, we may have to get some more wine for the house to cook with. But yeah. Alright, I'm gonna have to scour this site and just make everything on it. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna have to make just about everything here. <laughs> Heck yeah. Big stuff, yes. Oh, those look good. The huevos habaneros. <gasps> Dang. Then, for the taste, butter, paprika. Yum. Oh, I've made something similar to that. But that looks wicked good. Have you ever had um uh, tortilla espanola? Oh yeah yeah yeah. I've seen that yeah. Yum. I've had something similar. Yeah. I had something similar in Mallorca. Oh, it was so good. So when we actually went out for breakfast, it was really tasty. Um. Yeah. Oh. All right. We're 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 gonna we're gonna scour this site and make stuff. Cause yum. Um. Have you ever had um? What is it called? Um, there's a Turkish version of it where, um, but, uh, shaksuka, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> yeah, shaksuka is really good. You put eggs in a tomato sauce and then you have it with bread and other, so oh, so good. I made it a few times and it's really tasty. I like making it with meat actually because it, it goes a long way, so. <laughs> you should probably go, but <laughs> you, you have your own thingy to do, right? <laughs> I also do a simple rice bowl of fries. Oh, yeah, I've had that before. So good. Yup. Um, I do a uh, fried egg salad, actually. So you make a, like, a salad with um, spinach, uh, like a regular salad like with spinach, tomatoes, onions, and whatever other vegetables you like in your salad. And then I put like three fried, fried eggs on top. And you put you can put like sauces and stuff on it too if you want, but um, that's really good, especially if you make it kind of more of like a tomato onion spinach thing. Yeah. Oh, okay, now I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna have to eat something after. Fried eggs are the bomb because it's like you get the egg and then you have a nice good nice runny yolk and like you get sauce. It's great. <laughs> All right. 
I could talk about breakfast forever, <laughs> but I'm like gonna let you go do your thing. I'm gonna finish this letter, and we'll finish out the stream. <laughs> All right, kids. Thanks for the website, though. That's awesome. Yes, I'm gonna get this letter done, and then work on another letter, and do some typing and things like that. So, but yeah. All right, you have a good stream. We're gonna finish this Pomodoro, and then we're gonna figure out what to do later. <laughs>
folks that is it for today and uh, I started ordering some stamps because I'm out of domestic stamps so I'm just like oops I had two just enough for the two letters that I have to respond to right now so uh, yeah I'm like oh I'm not I'm out of stamps I still have some international stamps so I don't have to buy those yet but anyway I hope you've had a great evening I hope you've had a great Wednesday and thank you for so much everybody for joining me and nerding out about food and politics and all sorts and immigration and all sorts of stuff so let's see where are we streaming right let me see what I can send you today oh I know I'm gonna send you today because because <laughs> So, um, have a great rest of your evening wherever you are, and I will talk to you all tomorrow for podcast editing day. Hooray! And, uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Bye, everybody.